Hi my beautiful people, welcome to Selvin Kitchen today. In Selvin Kitchen guys we have an awesome delicious recipe we're going to do today. So we're going to do a brown stew red snapper. It's an awesome delicious recipe we're going to do. If you see over there guys, we have a nice big red snapper over there what we're going to do. And then, you know me already, before I start anything, I'm boiling a nice cup of I'm gonna boil a nice cup of lemongrass tea because when you're cooking or anything like that you need to get something in your body so I have a nice big bag of lemongrass here so they're gonna take out two strands off of it and boil some lemongrass tea you don't have to use a lot of lemongrass when you boil in lemongrass tea guys just use two strands out of it or one if the strand is quite long just fold them up. I love my lemongrass tea. Time is cold. So before I start the cooking, give this a nice little wash. Although I wash it already before I dry it. Just give it a rinse. So before I start my cooking, I need a cup of tea. I need a cup of tea. So we have one nice size red snapper over here. It's a nice big red snapper. So this red snapper. I'm gonna brunch through it. Let me get some hand towel. So what I gotta do now, um, instead of cleaning it already, but I have to go through it and clean it again myself. So I'm just gonna get a knife. I just put it in this bowl here. So you need to, if they say they clean it guys, don't trust them. You need to clean it yourself again. Give it a nice look because you said it still has some scale on it. They said them clean it already, but you still have to clean it yourself again. Just go through it with a knife. Take your time, no rush. And just clean it because you don't want to hit no fish and your scale is coming in your mouth. So welcome guys. Hope you guys have a good Monday. All the parents and more take them kids to school and reach back home and relax. So they see it, a lot of scale on it. So outside is very cold and wet. So anybody reach, try their best to reach home, reach home safe. Have a cup of tea and relax. So that's why I just did a school run a while ago to take my daughter from school and outside is so cold and wet. So what I'm doing now guys, I just take off the fine scale, I have some fine scale right up to the tail and uh, the belly of the fish right up to the tail you want to get all of those scale off because whenever you buy a fish at the fish market you tell them to clean it but don't trust them they don't clean it 100 percent so you still have to take it home and give it a nice little clean so i'm looking for a nice brown stew red snapper today guys I have some parrot in the fridge, I'm gonna look after them in a week. So but now I'm looking for a nice brown stew. Red snapper. This is a nice size red snapper. It's quite expensive. Fish in this country is quite expensive, I'm telling you guys. Unless I have to go to Billings Gay's fish market. And then you get them fresh there but sometimes you don't have the time to go so far you have to wake up early in the morning to go to billingsgate fish market i have a cousin back home you know he's a fisherman he's brave because he got to sea at night taking fish gun taking gugglers and in light by this expensive light like a Light can shine very bright and in dive and shoot fish. You do that for years when you leave school in shooting fish. So if I look on you guys, I'm taking up all the scale off of it. It's a delicate process, it's not anything you can rush. Because if you rush it, you're gonna miss some of the scale and you don't want to miss any of it you don't want to just 
you don't want the eating your fish and scale is coming off in your mouth so it's a delicate process just take your time and go right through it which about the gillies I always have some scale there which about the gillies just taking time and get them off This is a nice fresh fish, you can look inside of it. The meat is, is kind of pink, you don't dark. And you look on the eye, the eye don't sink. When you're buying a fish, look on the fish eye. If the fish eye sink, the fish is not fresh. So, when you guys buying fish, always check, up, check the eye of the fish. And check inside of the fish. If the meat is dark, that fish is not not fresh. So I'll just take my time here, guys, and just take off the scale off of it, and then after, I'm just gonna wash it with some vinegar, or I think I'm gonna use lemon and wash it. And then after I wash it, I'm gonna cut it in two. I ain't gonna fry it all like this, I'm just gonna cut it in two. And then after we go inside of it now. Inside of it, it look quite clean, but give it a little check. Where the belly is at the back there. I'm gonna get everything out. This is a nice red snapper. Back home, we used to eat a lot of Red snapper and parrot fish, that's our favorite fish. I don't like small fish in the guys because small fish have too much bone in it. So when I'm buying fish, I always look for the a nice, even buy one fish, more than I buy six small fish. If I buy one good size fish for the same money, it's better. Money to buy six small fish, we have too much bone. The big fish, them know you can find the bones them easy. But the small one, them know. Because one time fish bone nearly killed me. So I don't really play with fish. I think my brother they cook some fish soup. And when cook the fish soup now they find the fish bone stuck in the dumpling. And you bite the dumpling now and, and I'll swallow the dumpling. You're hungry now, and catching through that through that dumpling, you know. And fish bone stuck on my short. Guy, yeah, so I have to bite up some of the dumpling, swallow them like a tablet to get out the fish bone. So, what I'm gonna do now, guys, I'm just gonna get. Some lemon juice. If you notice what I'm cooking, I use either lemon or vinegar to wash my meat. Use a lot of lemon. So you need to wash your fish properly, wash out your meat properly. You want to wash outside, you want to open the belly and go inside of it. Just wash it out. Where the gill is, where the head is, it's going to wash it. Right out there, guys. Throw off that water, then we rinse them off now. Nice size red snapper. This red snapper costs 15 pounds, guys. I believe it. 15 quid. So I'm gonna dry it now. I'm just gonna get the knife. Scroll it down like that. Get off some of the excess water off of it. Because before I season up it, I'm gonna dry him first.
So you don't want to season up your fish and you have a lot of water in it because when you're gonna put it to fry, you don't want the oil to pop out on you and burn you. So make sure you get something to, you cannot get off all of the water, but you get off what you can get off. So that's what I'm doing now. Try to get off most of the water go inside of the fish. You see it? There's the second one. Get another one and just get all of the water out, guys. Then after I'm gonna slice it in two. So I'll take off all of the that water off of it before I slice it into and season up it, guys. So what I'm gonna do now, guys, I'm just gonna slice them in two. Nice red snapper. Slice them in two there, guys. And now, I'm just gonna season up him now. But before I season up him, I'm just gonna bore some hole in it. I'm just gonna cut some, some slices in it. So when I'm gonna season up it, it's seasoned to go right down in that fish. So before I do that, I'm just gonna mark some line like that. And the both side, because when you're going to season up, you're going to add some season right down in this part where you cut. Because if you don't do that, no, you're just going to season up outside of the fish and inside of the fish. And you have no seasoning. So we got a sharp knife. And there's four slices. Just like that. They want them too big. I don't know about you guys, you know, but I love fish head. Same way with the fish head, just slice, put some slice in it. Get that out of the way. So now, I just gotta season up the fish now. With some onion and garlic powder. We have some fish. Some all purpose season. Some fish season. I'm gonna put some salt and some pepper. So right now, guys, what I'm gonna do now, my tea is coming on nicely. I don't turn up the fire too high with my lemongrass tea. So right now, what I'm gonna do now, I'm just gonna season up this fish. You're gonna add some some fish season, some all purpose season. Let me take off the lid of it, all of them. So I don't have to touch them again till I wash my hands. Let me get a small spoon. So now I'm just gonna add some all purpose season. Of them so what I say guys just gonna add some season down in the part where I slice and you're gonna add some season in the belly of the fish okay, you want to season up your fish properly all right all-purpose season sorted and then right now we're gonna add some fish season but I don't gonna add a lot of fish season in it Gonna add a little sprinkle over that one, sprinkle there, a little sprinkle down right down in it there. So all the time I'm using, I'm cooking like 
seafood or anything like that I use the fish season because we don't really use it because you have a strong taste. All right, so now let's gonna add some onion powder. No, not onion powder, garlic powder. Let's add some garlic powder in the two of them. Then gotta add some onion powder. Then, let me wash my hand. So now I'm gonna add some salt and pepper. Add some pepper. Add some salt. So now I'm just gonna get my hand on in it and rub all of that season, all of that pepper, everything together. Just use your finger and just push down the season down the, right down into that fish where you slice. Okay, slice them together so you want to get all of that season right down in it. This is a nice size fish. Red snapper. So that fish already seasoned up already guys. So now I'm just gonna put the frying pan on the fire now to hot. Can you have to make your oil hot before you fry your fish, guys? Because you don't want it to stop in the, the pot bottom. Let me get these out of the way. As soon as you don't use them, get them out of the way. So you have more space to do what you're doing. Uh, you don't want to have to be a cook and then you have so much things in the way what you're doing all right i'm gonna put that on the back burner let me show you guys over there what i'm doing so thank you guys for tuning in today and serving kitchen guys so this is the back burner i'm using so it's a nice red snapper fish we're doing of my Lemongrass tea is coming down nicely, guys. So I hope you guys did have a good Monday. Hope everybody's safe. If you're coming home from work, get home safe, people. And if you're there with your family and everybody's there, a big shout out to everybody who tuned in today. Thank you guys to support Self in Kitchen. I really appreciate it. So. I'm gonna make this aisle at the fair one a good two minutes. And then I'm gonna make a cup of lemongrass tea. I wish if you guys was here so I could make a nice cup of lemongrass tea and share with you guys. Lemongrass tea is the best tea in my opinion. Lemongrass tea, peppermint, ginger tea, that is my three favorite tea. Uh, when I was growing up, guys, we never know about no coffee tea or nothing like that. We used to good, good old herbal tea. Good old herbal tea, guys. You used to use orange leaf boiled tea, lemon leaf, lime leaf, up leaf to boil tea. Cersei. Anybody ever drink Cersei before? A lot of people don't like Cersei because they say Cersei is too bitter. But as I said, is good for, the, for your blood. 
And then we also have this tea again named Bissy tea. It grated the Bissy, let it dry, then you use it to boil tea. Beautiful tea. But Bissy tea with milk, oh, amazing. So, the lemongrass is here guys, it's coming down nicely. Let us dry my lemongrass, I don't let it... So this lemongrass, you can use it two times, because it's quite strong. Soon as you see the color in the water start to change, that lemongrass is ready, that tea is ready. So I'm going to turn off that lemongrass now. I had some tea. So this is my lemongrass tea. I have to have my tea when I'm cooking, guys. I this coming from outside, and outside is quite cold. So, so uh, as I said before, I want a big shout out to everybody who tuned in today. Thanks, thank you guys for the support. And please give me a thumbs up for the video, people. I'm cooking a nice, delicious brown stew red snapper today. And I think I'm gonna cook it with some potato. I don't put on my potatoes yet. So make yourself a cup of tea guys and sit down and tune in. So I'm gonna put on a pot right over here for the, for the potato. I don't really have a big stove guys, my stove is quite small, so I'll just work with what I have. So I'm just going to put on a pot over here to go and boil. I'm going to peel the potato. As I said before guys, anybody have a spare device, you can check out my playlist. So I'm gonna add some salt in that. If you have a spare device that you guys are using. And check out my playlist, I really appreciate it that guys. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna make, let that hile hot because you don't want to put your fish in a the hile is not hot, you don't want the fish to break up. So I'll let that hot, and then after, I'm gonna prepare my bell pepper, my onion, and my, my garlic. So I'm gonna test this hile if it's hot. Need to hot some more. Cause you don't want to hide it in and your hile is not hot, guys. So anybody in America, thank you guys to tune in. Anybody in England, anybody in the Philippines, anybody in Jamaica, anybody in India, thank you guys to tune in. Anybody across the world who tune in to Selvin Kitchen today, guys. Thank you guys very much. I really appreciate it. So I'm cooking a nice brown stew red snapper today. And I'm drinking a nice cup of lemongrass tea. So what I'm going to do now, guys, I'm just going to add the fish now, because the hile is supposed to be hot now. Oh, yes. But when you add in your fish, guys, and don't let, don't give them a little bit of space. Don't let them stuck on each other. Cause I don't want them when they're frying. They itch. Oops. The big boy there jump right out. Nice big red snapper, guys. 
Nice big red snapper. That's what I'm saying. If you're buying fish and you're going to buy three or four fish and that same money can buy one nice size big fish, it's better you buy one nice size big fish because the small fish have so much bone in them. So that's why I don't really like small fish. So I could have used this money would I pay for this fish and buy like four other fish. But I prefer buy one big fish more than one uh, and four small fish. So the red snapper is there. Let that fry. Over here now I'm just gonna do some washing up, just clean up a bit. Look at that beautiful red snapper there guys. Nice size red snapper there coming down. It's a nice brown stew red snapper we're doing today. So over here now guys, I'm just gonna do some cleaning up a bit, wash up. So when you look off a fish guys, you have to use a little bit of bleach. You get out the rawness. So there guys. You have to use a little bit of bleach to get out the rawness. Let me move up that you guys can see what I'm doing over there. I mean like that fish is going to fry over there. So use a little bit of bleach. Look at the rawness guys. I know that fish is quite raw. raw. So I have two board guys. I have one board for the cotton board for the meat. And you have one for your vegetable. So don't use the same cotton board when you're using like your meat. Cut up your meat. You use the cut up on your vegetable at the same time. But if you're doing that, make sure you wash it properly. So it's a nice big red snapper we're doing so you need a lot of oil in it so you want the oil to soak right between that red snapper you don't want the, the red snapper not in the middle of the red snapper don't fry so it's a brunch to red snapper we're doing you know that we ain't gonna fry it right through we ain't gonna fry it till it's crispy because we're doing brunch too if you're doing an escobie fish now you're gonna fry it crispy So you have a stew fish, then you have a brown stew fish, and then you can do an extra beef fish, or you can do a curry fish, or you can do a, a coconut fish, you can do a roast fish, you can do a dirt fish. So there's many different ways you can do fish. So I have a lot more recipe coming up with fish. Keep your surrounding clean. So now guys, what I'm gonna do now, I'm just gonna check these red snapper here. I'm just gonna turn them around. Nice red snapper. So you guys can see what I'm doing right here with that red snapper there guys. Look at that. Ooh, nice red snapper guys. And then zoom in on that a bit. So now what I'm gonna do now, I'm just gonna turn these red stuff around. This is a big boy, you know. Gonna get something strong to hold that one, cause that one is big. Go 
gonna get a bigger order for that one. It's quite heavy. Here you go. So Mila, that is frying now, guys. What I'm gonna do now, I'm just gonna prepare my onion. Garlic, see that red snapper is kicking up there. Nice red snapper. So over here now, we're just gonna prepare some onion and some garlic and some bell pepper, spring onion. So me like that red snapper going to fry itself away. So I have some onion here, bell pepper, so I have a red and a, a yellow bell pepper. I don't have any green bell pepper today. So I cut out the seed out of that in bell pepper and any except seed you have in the bell pepper, just give it a tap. Top with all of that bell pepper. In the summertime, you know, guys, I plant this seed. Sometimes I get loads of bell pepper. I get too much bell pepper. Or tomato. I don't really go to the shop and buy tomato plant. Or bell pepper plant. I take out the seed. In the summertime, and I put them in a pot. And let them spring up. So when they spring up, I transplant them in a some flower spot and then after they need a lot of water in tomato, bell pepper, they need a lot of water. But when I plant tomato guys, I get a lovely crop of tomato all the time. Sometimes I have tomato, I don't know what I'm gonna do with tomato. But I have to take some to work and give and give my friends them, I give my neighbors them some of them. But now I move house now, I don't have enough back door space like I used to have before. So I've got to buy some flowers pot. Because I love to plant, guys, I love to plant. So I'm using one carrot. Today and I have one scotch bunny pepper. I'm going to use some, some thyme, some dry thyme. So I'm going to have a look on that red snapper now. I don't want it to brown out too much. I'm going to crack this window a bit. It's so winter time outside, it's cold guys, so I crack the window a bit to get out some of the, the smell. I don't want to turn on the fan because it makes too much noise. So let me check that red snapper again. Don't want that red snapper to burn. Ooh, look at that nice big red snapper there guys. I'm just going to take him out now. So it's this red snapper already fry now. I don't want to fry too much because I'm gonna cook him right down with some onion and some carrot and some bell pepper, and garlic and ginger. So right now, like that, you don't want to fry him too much. Lovely, nice red snapper guys. Nice big boy. So, 
gonna switch off that stove. And then I'm gonna prepare the onion and the bell pepper and the garlic and everything like that, guys. So I'm spinning around right back around here, guys. You guys can see what I'm doing over here. Thank you guys for tuning in today. Thank you guys for the support because we have to support each other. Give me a second, hey guys. Give me one second, guys. One second. Yes, my beautiful people, I am back. So right now, we're just going to prepare the onion and the bell pepper and everything like that. So I have one half and half, one onion. I have a piece of spring onion. I have some garlic. We're gonna use around five to six cloves of garlic. So before I do that, I'm just gonna peel off all of the skin off of the, the garlic. So around five cloves of garlic I'm using, guys. Thank you guys for tuning in today again. And a shout out to everyone. A big shout out to everyone who tuned in today. This YouTube thing, you know, guys, I'm still learning. This is a learning process for me. I'm still learning every day I go by. I'm still learning something more and something more, something more, something more. So I'm off and work now for a couple of days, so. I'm gonna try and do even three live cooking every day, every week. For the next couple of weeks, I'm off for two weeks. So I'm gonna try to, uh, I think this week I'm gonna try and make a cereal drink, a nice, beautiful cereal drink. The cereal drink I'm gonna make, guys, you never see that cereal drink before. I have half a lemon here. All right, now, what I'm gonna do now, just gonna wash these. Sorry guys, if you heard it nice outside, I live right near the, the train station, the train, the railway. So that's how I don't really hope in the winter some other time, but now when, you, when you're frying fish, get that smell so you want to try and get that smell out of your house all right what we're going to do now guys we're just going to cut up the bell pepper let's so get a sharp knife So, it's gonna cut up the bell pepper car, you know, so when you guys eating food, the first thing you see the food is your high. And if your food don't look good, I look preservative, I look good on the plate, you say, oh my God, I wonder if this food tastes nice. So your food have to have in some color, guys. Put some color in your food. If you don't have a lot of color, just put a little bit of color in your food. Okay, we're gonna share the food to a person, and to somebody, a visitor. Come to your house and then gonna look on your plate and so if your food look too bland, you have to have a little bit of color. 
put a little bit of color in it, guys. So I'm using one carrot today and using two carrot. But the one carrot I'm doing, I'm just gonna slice them up like that. Let's get a sharp knife and just run them through. So you don't want to over power it with the carrot. Then the tomato, I'm using one tomato. Gonna use a little bit of tomato ketchup as well. Run a two teaspoon or a tablespoon. But I'm using a fresh tomato. And one white onion. Optional guys, if you want to use the the red onion instead of the red onion, because a lot of people using use red onion. It's optional. You can use the red onion instead of the red onion. Or you can use both. You can use both if you want. When I'm cooking guys, I like to use a lot of onion or a lot of bell pepper and the one stalk of, half a stalk of spring onion. But one thing when I'm cutting up onion, the onion always burn my eye. If I need to get a onion cutter, onion always burn my eyes when I'm, I'm cutting up onion, guys. I don't know about, about you guys, but onion always burn my eye. So anybody have a, can tell me what they use to onion not to burn them high? Let me know. So I'm just finally chop the garlic. I ain't gonna grit the garlic today. I think I have another one here, but I can't find it. That, that one is loose. Anyway, more the barrier. All right. So that garlic and the, all of my veg and my seasoning, I already cut up a syllab off a lime to squeeze in it. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm just gonna get another pot. I can use the same pot, you know, just throw off some of the aisle. I don't want too much aisle. Get rid of some of the aisle, throw some of the aisle away. Some hot water. When I get a piece of, when I buy thyme at the market, guys, um, I wash my thyme, I put it to dry, and then I put on my thyme. Okay, if you're going to put it in the fridge like that, it's going to stay, and then it's going to go off, it's going to rotten. So the best thing you do, you wash it, and then after, you leave it out, open it, and let it dry. You can have thyme for a long time. So don't put it in the fridge. Okay, you put it in the fridge, and then you use it, it's going to go off. So make sure your time dry. If you have a, you have a buckle, you can put it in a buckle instead as well. 
but the dry time still give it the same taste and the same flavor and the same everything just like that so what i'm gonna do now i'm just gonna prepare my pot over here guys give me a second here guys i'm going to the I'm going to the, the toilet, guys. Give me a second. I'll soon be back. One minute. Yes, guys, I'm back. Thank you for your patience. So my time, nature call. So you have to do what nature said. So get that time out of the way. And then I'm gonna move back the camera over that part. I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do with that vegetable and everything for that fish. So I'm right back over here, guys. But that way. So I'm going to deal with the fish, for me now the fish is cooking down, I'm going to peel my potato and put on my potato to cook down. So I just leave a little bit of oil leaving it, I don't use too much oil and the same um, season and the same little burn will come off of the fish, don't throw that away, this is all with the magic in, so you keep that in. So 
So I'm just going to add in everything together. can smell that onion and that garlic already with that thyme I put a piece of scotch bonnet pepper in but I didn't put everything so that had a little bit of pepper over it again gonna add some salt Gonna have a little touch of sprinkle of all purpose season. And I give that a nice stir. And then I'm gonna add, add some soya sauce and some oyster sauce to this. Then I have half of lime. We're gonna squeeze and squeeze the lime juice. Even if you don't have the fresh lime, you can get the lemon, use the lemon instead. Or you can use a bit of lemon juice. Then guys, I'm gonna have some pimento allspice, but I'm gonna crush them up. So what I'm gonna do now guys, I'm just gonna crush up the pimento allspice. If you cannot get the pimento grain, you can use the pimento, the pounding pimento instead of the pimento grain. It's the same thing. But you know that you know me already. I'm old-fashioned. Love to do everything myself. So if you look at my pot, guys, it's a limit of motor oil in my pot. I don't like to cook with so much oil. So much oil don't good for you guys. So the less oil. You guys can use it's better for you guys so I'm gonna add some soya sauce and some oyster sauce Add in some soya sauce and some ice sauce, guys. You don't want to add in too much ice sauce because ice sauce have been salt in it, so be careful if you're using ice sauce. 
Oh yes, you want to smell that pimento kicking up already, guys. Now I'm just going to add in some ketchup. I'm going to add around a tablespoon of ketchup. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to add some that taste in my hand and taste it if I need any more salt or any more pepper. I think you can add a little piece more stuck bunny pepper for inside. The more pepper you put in it is better for you. But if you cannot take pepper, don't put the pepper in it, guys. Gonna add a little bit more salt to it. Add a little bit of water to it, guys. Don't put too much water. So now we're just going to add in the fish. And then I'm going to turn on that fire very low. You want to sink them in the bottom. Turn on that fire very low. Let them take time. I'm steam them wearing it. So use some of the gravy, some of the sauce, and just cover those fish. I'm going to turn them in a minute. Just turn on the fire. Don't want my fish them to break up so I don't put too much water in them. So I'm just going to turn on the stove. And then I'm going to put the lid on it. So I let the tech in time and cook and steam them. So now right over here now, we're just going to wash up some of these things and prepare my potato for my pot. So let him take time and cook down. You don't want to turn up the fire too high, let him you know, cook properly. So what I'm going to do over here now, guys, I'm just going to move on this a bit and just going to prepare my potato. for my potato peeler but before I let me get these out of the way first so I'm just gonna boil some potato let us Peeling some potato here, guys. Thank you, guys, to tune in today. 
Thank you guys for showing me the love. Anywhere you're from, anywhere country you're from. I really appreciate it a lot. Thank you for showing me the love. I'm just spilling some. I notice it the some of these potato where you buy. Some of them they're really good. You have to go get right down in the end of them. Don't know if through the weather it's changed. But I notice I prefer buy these red potato more than I buy the next potato them car. The next one them when you're boiling them they're easy to break up. But these one oh, they know hard to break up. So I'm gonna give that fish look on it another two minutes and take my time and turn him around. Let's get up a uh, vegetable peeler guys. It's quite quicker than a knife. And then peeling all of these potato and then that goes gonna cut them in two and boil them because I'm gonna do some mashed potato. I'm kinda ease off of the rice for the other day. I'm eating too much rice. So if I check my two last video what I do. Kind of cut on for the rice a bit. Wanna cook some nice soup next week. As I'm telling about the potato them, some of them you have to cut right down inside of them. Some of them are really good. I don't know if it changes the weather or what. But you have to waste so much of those potato. So let me have a look at that fish again. Oh, that fish is coming on. This is a nice fish over here we're doing, guys. Yes, that's it. That's a good shot there. You guys can see when I open that pot and look at that fish. So, like now, the fish now is cooking now. Now, so the fish gets softer now. So, be careful if you guys are doing this recipe and you're gonna turn the fish. Just be careful when you're turning them. You don't have to turn them. Just get a little bit of. Juice and see the scotch bunny pepper right here. Let's put on the top of it. What I gotta do again, I'm just gonna give it another taste. Just wanna taste some of the sauce. As if that sauce need anything more. Ah, well, I'm telling you, the scotch bunny pepper is saying, wow. So right now, I'm just going to use this and turn on the fish. You don't want that to hold them and break them up when you're turning them. There's a nice big red snapper. So you want to turn them around that, that nice ju juice. Sweet between all of those fish, go right between it. Turn on the fire a little bit more, begin to take time and steam itself right away. So, just gonna finish preparing the potato. So 
a lovely red snapper we're doing today guys in Selvin Kitchen. We really appreciate you guys for coming in today. Thank you guys very much. I really appreciate it that you guys show me the love and everything like that. Let me get this thing that you guys can see what I'm doing over there. So right about now I'm just going to wash the potato, cut it up and put it in the pot to boil. So the water is there boiling, getting hot to put in that potato guys. So I'm just peeling this potato. When you're cooking guys, there's no rush. You just take your time and cook. Just feel relaxed. Don't rush your food when you're cooking. Okay, if you rush your food when you're cooking, when you finish your food, it's gonna taste like crap. So anytime you're cooking, you just relax. Relax, just take your mind off of, your, off of stress. Just take your mind off of anything you're doing. Just focus on that food what you're cooking. And you're frightened. When you taste that food, you say, wow, I wonder if I may cook that food. But when you go through stress now, you have a lot of things on your plate. A lot of things doing. You don't know how your food is going to turn out. So when you're cooking, just take your mind off of stress. Just focus on your food, what you're doing. And then you frighten. You see that nice, delicious food you're cooking. Turn out for your family. Your family gonna ask, hey, who cooked this food? Me. That's how you're stress free. But if you have a lot of stress that you're cooking, nah. Because you have, a, you have too much things on your head to think about that time. You're thinking on the food, you're thinking about your stress. So you don't focus properly, you don't start chucking anything in the pot. But some of the time, maybe you're tired, you want to stir up something quickly. If you're tired, you want to cook something quickly, you don't think about fish or chicken or something like that. You don't want to cook something like maybe some sardine and rice or corned beef and rice or some steamed cabbage or something like that. You want to do something fast, quickly. Some dosh. Wash it off some of these, these things guys as I go by. I don't like to as I said before, a clean kitchen is a happy kitchen. Oops, where are you going my friend? Yeah, a clean kitchen is a happy kitchen guys. Alright, what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to wash my potatoes in. Then I'm just gonna slice them up and put them in my pot over here. My, my pot already boiling already. See the pot over here, guys. We're gonna put in the potatoes them already boiling already right there. So let me open it. Because right now I just gonna slice them up. Because I'm gonna crush them, so I'm just gonna slice them up and let them boil. You don't wanna cut them up too small. Are too big. Just cut them up thin, like this big one. Or just cut it in three. So 
So the fish over here, so I can switch out my fish in a minute. You don't want to overcook the fish and let it mash right out. I'm gonna switch off that fish. So we're going to taste this, when I'm boiling this potato, I taste if we need any more salt in it. That's fine. So I'm going to check my fish again. Nice brown stew, red, red snapper. So I'm gonna check that red snapper, you guys can see it, what I'm doing there. If you notice guys, when I'm cooking, and I'm cooking down the, the red snapper, I don't add a lot of water to the pot. Look at that people, look at that. Beautiful red snapper. Brunch to fish. So that's me and the deer. Just had some of the juice on the top of it. Let it run right between that fish. And just soak right between that fish. Go right between the bone and the meat and everything like that. Oh yes, that fish is ready. Ah, I'm telling you guys, it's scotch bonnet pepper is in it. What? You cannot cook your fish with no pepper in it, so you have to have some pepper in your fish. Especially if you're cooking like sardine fish or mackerel fish, you know that mackerel fish a sardine fish, the, the rawness on them is quite high. So if you're cooking those fish guys, you know so you need to you know, wash up these dishes now. If you're cooking those fish, you know that you have to put a lot of pepper in it. I was going to put some okra in it, but the, the okra that I see at the shop it never, the okra, okra they never look too nice. The okra they never look too fresh. Because you know when you buy okra, you have to squeeze them, the bottom of it, and break it. When you break the bottom of it, and you hear the bottom go tip, the okra is ready to, to eat. That okra is young, but if you break the bottom of the okra, and you don't break it, bend like a spring, like a rubber. The okra is always the old okra. So, any of you guys going to the shop or to the market and buy okra, the bottom of the okra, just bend it back a bit. And whenever it breaks and it goes tip, okra is ready to eat. The okra is young, the okra is fresh, the okra is nice. But if you bend it back and it cannot break, the okra is old. If you're gonna boil that okra, the okra gonna come strong, there's a lot of strand gonna come in with it. The okra is an old okra. My uncle used to plant okra in the guys. My uncle used to plant a lot of okra, we used to steal them. We used to just go, in, go into the garden, take them off the tree, and just put them in our mouth and just eat them just like that. Tell when we start to plant it now. <laughs> my friends and my brother they used to steal them from me. My, you know what is my dream, people? My dream. 
to retire. Have a nice bit of land. Maybe a half acre or one acre or something. I don't want bigger than that. So I can do my farming. Because if I have my piece of land where I can do my farming, I can plant my bell pepper, my onion, my scotch bunny pepper, my thyme, my tomato, my callaloo, my chocho, cabbage. I don't have to go to the market and buy those things. A lot of people have the land, but they don't want to plant on it. Special in the tropical country, the minute you can plant, you don't have to have a big space. A lot of people have land, but they won't plant. Like, if you plant a, a planting tree, plant the banana sucker, you take one year before it starts to produce planting. And that planting sucker, when you plant that planting sucker, that planting sucker can give you another 10 planting sucker. But that planting sucker, as soon as you cut down that planting tree, that planting tree is die, but you have more sucker springing up. Just like you have your banana tree. But planting takes longer to produce more than banana. But when you plant your planting, or your banana tree, you will keep on a banana. You will keep on a planting. If you plant your chocho, you will keep on a chocho. Right through the year you have chocho. Because I remember my uncle, God, God rest his soul, he passed away. That man used to plant three different types of trocho. You have the one they call the, the army trocho, that had a green skin one, but you have another green skin one with a lot of spur on it. That one, you have to be careful, that one will run in your hand if you, if you don't know how to pick it. And then you have the normal soft skin green skin trocho and people used to come from market like a weekend time and buy trocho from him and then he used to plant pumpkin and pumpkin him used to run like all over the place all different type of pumpkin that man pumpkin when he planting pumpkin and you boil thin pumpkin it tastes like yellow yam dry nice nice pumpkin but this generation nowadays, most of them they don't want to farm. Just, that is my dream. When I have, when I retire, if I have some money right now, I already retire. And then I have a piece of land, then I plant my own stuff them on it because I love, I love farming. I don't want to farm to big farming. Just want to farm to support your house. And maybe you can give you give away some of them. So that is my dream. Maybe one day dream will come true. But that is my dream too. You don't have to go to the market, go buy no, none of those stuff. I used to plant sugar cane in a guys. I used to plant not sugar cane, I used to plant cane, but you need to call it a cane sugar cane. But not the tough sugar cane, I used to plant normal cane where you eat. I don't know when they call it a cane sugar cane. Because sugar cane is the tough one they use to make sugar. So that, that is my dream. To have a nice piece of land, not too big. And to plant my own fruits and veg. Your mango, everything. Look at most most property you're going in Jamaica like all Kingston or Clarendon most of these houses you know, people land they have them mango tree they have every three there they have everything there they have most land have the mango tree have the aki tree but I'm telling you this more you younger generation guys we all we have to do is pray for them. All we can do is pray for them. I'll put it in there for you later, Marissa. Okay. Yeah, all we can do is pray for them. But I'm going to check my potato now. So my potato is coming on. 
and I get a fork. Check those nice, lovely potato there over there, guys. So the potato is getting on. So in life, guys, everybody has to have a dream. So over here, have the lovely potato them cooking down. Potato then coming along nicely, people. Fish already finished already. Give this potato another two, another five minutes. Give me a second, there, guys. One second. Yes, my beautiful people. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm just gonna add some sweet corn and some green peas in it to cook them with our potatoes. I'm gonna everything together. This is a different type of mashed potato we're doing, guys. It's a frozen green peas. You know that when you guys come on to self in kitchen, we're always doing something new. So prepare when you guys come on to self in kitchen. It's not the same old, same old type of cooking. It's a different type of cooking we're doing. It's a different type of cooking we're doing, guys. So I give that around 10 minutes to, for that sweet corn and that green peas to cook on a bit. Normally, I steam the sweet corn and I steam the green peas. But today now, so I'm cooking brunch to fish and a mashed potato. I'm just gonna do that. The add the sweet corn in it. So thank you guys again to checking in and self in kitchen guys. I really appreciate it. Thank you guys very much for the love. Thank you guys very much for giving me a thumbs up. And guys, thank you for the support a million and million and one times. Anywhere you're from, thank you guys very much for your support. 
And as I say again, guys, anybody have a spare device, please check out my playlist. I really appreciate it. If you have a spare device and you guys are using it, um, please check out my playlist, guys. All right. So, fish over here, finish cook already, and then I did splash up the stove over here with some oil. So I don't want the oil, too much oil to sleep, but that's gonna clean up that oil where I did splash. When I had it in the fish in the, in the pot, some oil is splashed right out. So I'm gonna try my best to clean up some of that oil from that fish. Okay, you can see the oil at the back there, guys. I did have a little bit of splashing right there. So I'm gonna try and clean up some of that oil. Because the worst thing you can do, the oil to come on your burners, then your burners then be change color. Because some come on that back burner already. So I'm gonna take off that back burner and score it. So clean up some of this oil right here. Can I clean everything till it finish, but I don't want to leave it right here or let it, it go down in the stove. Just clean up some of the aisle. Normally, it don't happen to me, you know, because I don't hide in that fish and that fish just saying you want to escape. And you just jump in and the aisle splashed out. Because one thing I hate see guys, I hate see a dirty stove, but I don't like see a dirty stove. One of my uncle, they did have a stove for around 20 years. Yeah, he did have a stove. Okay, he did go to, he, he do some work in America. I didn't bring on that stove for America. I don't, I don't, 100% sure. He did have that stove for around 20 years. Any of my cousin them watching this video, they can back me up and say I'm talking, the, telling the truth. The man did have a stove for around 20 years. Because anytime they use the stove, he always make them clean it down same time. I watch the burner them. You see the salt and the grease. The salt and the grease will rot, rot in your stove if you don't clean it properly. Just like if you live near the sea. If you buy a house near the sea, you have to keep on maintaining your house because the salt breeze from the sea, they come in your appliance them and wrap them down. Or your zinc or anything like that. Or your fur furniture them. So it's the same thing. If you have your stove and you don't maintain it properly, clean up all the grease and the salt off of it, it will rotten down quickly. So I learned that from my uncle. So as I said, let me feel this burner, it's hot. No, it's not hot. It's a little bit warm. So I'm gonna scour, so we can scour some of this burner because the oil did get down in it. So you don't want your burner to cake up with. Because if you don't wash it off now, and you're gonna turn on your stove and then your burner, the fire gonna burn that oil and gonna go down in the metal. That metal gonna come black, gonna come dark, and it's hard to come off. So if you can get rid of it, eliminate that problem. Don't let that problem get a major problem. You have to buy a new stove or something like that. So over here now, I'm gonna try and scour some of these, the two burn our leaf. So me like that potato, it's cooking down nicely guys, coming down nicely. So I'm gonna try and scour, scour off some of this two burner, 
got the oil is splash up on it. So you have to try and eliminate this problem, see like that? That brown spot there, look up at the oil, it come on it and the fire did catch it. So if you don't clean it now, later on, when you turn on the stove again, you're cooking on it again and you keep on cooking on it again, you're never going to clean it off. So just eliminate this problem. So this problem don't turn out a bigger problem and cost you money. It's not hard, it's easy. Like that, my people? Nice and shine. But the big one now have more mark on it because the, that one it is used to fry the chicken. And most of the oil catch on that one and I didn't see it. If I did see it, I would have changed the burner at the same time. I wouldn't make it burn like that. See like that? The highly catch it. And this one was burning. So this one gonna be hard to get off. Coming off nicely. Easy, well, I think. Ooh, nice and shine, guys. Look at that. Boy, if you're gonna leave this till tomorrow, and then you're gonna turn on the stove and you're gonna cook on it again. So you're gonna be harder to get off. So the best thing you can do, eliminate one part of the problem now. Oh, look at that people, nice and shine. So that didn't take me five minutes. So eliminate that problem and it's okay now. Because my uncle showed me that, I never forget that. Just like I was doing a video yesterday, I show you guys how to clean up your appliance then. Like your blender, your ear fryer, your juice maker. Everything like that. You have to keep them clean. You have them there and you don't use them. And you're cooking in the kitchen and the steam going up. If you find something, you may be thinking that the grease and get on top of them, but the grease go on top of them. And dust. So just give them a nice little clean, like maybe for seven months or something like that. So you keep them nice and fresh and brand new. So when you're ready to use them again now, it won't give you a lot of problem. When you're cooking with Selvin, you know, guys, and you come on to Selvin kitchen, we don't do rush cooking, we take our time and cook. So me and I we're cooking, we're cleaning at the same time. So we don't deal with rush cooking over here. All right. I'm gonna check these Potato again, the potato is supposed to be ready now. Yes guys, the potato is supposed to be ready now. Let me move this right back over here that you guys can see what I'm doing over here. The potato is supposed to be ready right now. Well, 
when I get some money, people, I'm going to invest in some nice cameras. I don't have to move up. I'm going to set one there, one up there. So I don't have to move up everything. Oh, yes. Put it in them ready. So that this can turn off right now. That can turn off right now, guys. So the potato them ready. If when I get some money, people, I'm gonna invest in you know, some nice camera. It's quite expensive, but for the time being, you guys bear with me. I have to use what I have till I get some money. I invest in a two nice cameras. I can have one over over my head, one shining there, one shining there. So I have all different type of handle. To show you guys uh, what I'm looking for now, I'm looking for something, but I cannot find it. All right, what I'm gonna do now, guys, I'm just gonna strain off this water. Let me get some butter. So mayonnaise and some milk so I have some butter over here, I have some mayonnaise, I have some milk I'm a slow cooker guys, I'm not a uh, Guys who rush my cooking, I just take my time and cook, okay? I'm a slow cooker. So I like my food to come out properly and done properly. So I'm a slow cooker. So right now, guys, I'm just going to chew off this water. Let me get something to hold those pot. Remember one time, guys, I was throwing off. I don't remember what I was cooking. I was cooking something. I think I was throwing off the water like that, and this steam gave me a burn right here. I know, guys, I still have the mark right here. There. Still have that mark. So, I don't really risk again. Anybody cooking in the kitchen don't have a kitchen burner or something like that. I'm telling you. Yes, so leave that metal drain, drain off all of that excess water. Leave that metal drain off, get that water in off of that. Get these out of the way. And then I'm looking for my crusher. So find my crochet here guys, right here. My surface already clean already, everything clean. And if you guys can see properly what I'm doing over there, let me check. Okay, right there. Let me back up a bit. Right there. Yo, thank you guys for the thumbs up and anybody watching the video and you don't subscribe people it's free to subscribe no charge so what i'm gonna do now guys i'm just gonna add in the potato with the sweet corn and the green peas you can try this recipe one of these days guys you can try this recipe and it had no egg in this so i'm doing this a different way so if you guys invest in one of these food drainer, and if you do something like that in it, just wash it off same time because when it gets dry, it's hard to come out. So just give it a slightly wash for the time being. Wash off the, the tip. 
thickest part of it. So when you're gonna wash it now, you don't have to take long process to wash it. All right guys, so what I'm gonna do now, I'm just gonna add in some butter. Add in some butter in that guys, don't add in a lot of butter because don't like too much grease. Add in some mayonnaise. And then it's gonna add in some milk. Just add in a little drop of milk, not too much milk. You don't want your potato to so have any then you just mash away. I don't like my, my mashed potato to dry guys, I have a little bit of um, gum in it guys, a little bit of stamina in it, a little bit of thing in it, a bit of colour in my mashed potato. So I don't have to put any salt in it because I did have salt already, that's gonna add a little bit of pepper in it. Yes, people, this is all finished now. We're gonna share out some dinner now because, guys, I am so starving. I don't know, you, a lot of you guys eat your dinner already. I don't eat my one as yet. So, let me give it a taste. Let me taste it. Ooh, la la la. Hmm. Hit that spot, people. Hit that spot. Hit that spot, guys. So tomorrow, I have a... Uh, I think I'm going to make some cereal juice tomorrow, guys. But I'm going to make the cereal juice a different way. I think I have some cereal there from last year. I think I'm gonna make, make use of it. So what ready now? Everything, mashed potato is there. Everything is finished up. The brown stew fish is there, guys. What I'm gonna do now, just gonna clear up this table. When I clear up my table, get these, all of these mess out the way, and then I'm gonna sit down and eat some food, guys. Wait a minute, the fish is for me. That, that normally, guys, if you buy fish, and maybe a lot of people don't eat fish head, don't throw the fish head. You can use the fish head to boil some fish head soup. So you put it in the pot first and you scald it off, then take it out and you get all of the flavor out of that fish head. And then after, you pick it up and then you can boil some fish head soup. I have some fish head in the fridge. So I'm going to boil some fish head soup. I'm going to do a recipe with some fish head soup and show you guys. So a lot of people when they buy fish, they throw the head. But the head, you can boil fish head soup. Because that, that fish head have a lot of, lot of meat in it the same way. So 
so you guys can save that fish head. Clean it up, if you don't want to use it at the same time, clean it up, cut it up, put it in a bag, put it in the freezer. Then one of these days, alright, they say, oh, I feel like I want to drink some soup, you know, but I don't know what type of soup to drink. I don't know what type of soup to drink. So you guys can boil some fish head soup. But when you guys cooking, boiling fish head, just be careful. All right, fish soup. I just be careful at the, the bone. So make sure you call off your fish first and you take your time. And I ain't gonna give away my secret as yet. So when you guys are gonna see me make that video, you're gonna see what I'm doing. So thank you guys for checking in today, I really appreciate it. And anyway, you guys fam, a big shout out to you and your, and your family people. So I'm just gonna share with somebody this dinner. Let me get a plate. I think I'm gonna eat out of uh, one of these plates today. I haven't taken one of these plates a long time. So I'm hungry guys, I'm so hungry. Alright guys. Let me get this rubbish bag out of the way. Put this rubbish bag over here and throw it out later. So what I'm gonna do now guys, I'm just gonna share out some dinner. Gonna make you guys see what I'm doing. So I'm gonna share with some dinner. It's a brown stew fish with mashed potato. Hope you guys enjoyed this recipe. Please give me a thumbs up for the video and please share and like the video with your friends and family. Tell a friend to tell a friend about Selvin Kitchen. So I'm gonna get some of these pots out of the way. Too many train passing, it's a peak hours now. Okay, so the first thing do, I'm gonna have a piece of fish. Nice brown stew fish here, guys. So the fish head is for me. Yep, it's a nice big fish head. Oh, look at that beautiful, lovely fish head there. So I have to have a little bit of juice and that fish head, a little bit of gravy. Some carrot, some onion, some bell pepper. Have to have that and that fish head. Because as I said before, guys, when you're cooking your food, my food have to have a little bit of color in it. So I didn't have any green bell pepper today. It have more color in it, but didn't have any green bell pepper. So now I'm just gonna have some mashed potato to that oh yes mr robinson oh yes oh yes mr robinson look on that boy hit the jackpot boy hmm whoa that's it you have to have a little bit of gravy when you're heating guys i don't like to heat my food and my food is so dry have to have a little bit of gravy in my food So right now, I'm just gonna sit down over here, guys, and I'm just gonna take my time. I need something to put in the bone in. I need something to clean my hand because I'm gonna sit down and I'm gonna enjoy this beautiful recipe. What Selvin Kitchen we do in Selvin Kitchen today, guys? Trust me, it's a beautiful recipe. Like I hit the jackpot today, guys. Not the latter, but. I hit the jackpot. Let me get something to put in my bones, them guys. I soon make you guys see what I'm doing. Something to put in the bones, cause you know that fish have a lot of bones. 
and when you're eating your fish you have to just take your time and eat fish guys don't rush your fish when you're eating fish because fish is very dangerous Very dangerous. So, oops, we're freezing there. Oops, let me, my battery's dying, guys. Let me charge this battery. Give me a second. Give me a second, guys. I just up. it was freeze, freeze a while ago, and I didn't know. My apology, guys. And as I said, I want to get some money, I want to invest in uh, some camera because you cannot do this thing and you're doing a video and then it freezes in every minute. You never know when the battery is going to die. So I'm just going to turn myself around and around and around. See my season stand, guys, with all, all of my season, them, everything is over there. So I'm gonna turn myself around and around and around and around. Then I'm gonna bend on myself right here. And then I'm gonna dip myself right here, guys. And I'm gonna dip, 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 dip. Do you, oh, oops, what is that? What is that? Oops. Look at that recipe there, people. Ooh. Wish of you guys was here to taste some of this. Mm. Wait. Yes, Lord. Thank you to give me the strength, Lord. Thank you. Give me the strength. Give me the will. Give me the way to prepare this nice recipe today. Of my ginger beer here. Of my bowl to put in my bones there. Eh? Of my glass. Of my thing here to wipe my hand. So, before we eat, we have to. Bless the food and give the Almighty God thanks. Thank you, Lord, to provide this food today. Thank you, Jesus, to show me the way. Thank you, guys, to give me the strength. Thank you, Lord, to give me the way, give me the strength to cook this food. That I can eat this food. This food can nourish my body. This food can bless my body. So, loving Christmas, Father, thank you very much. In Jesus' name, amen. Moment of truth. All right, before we do that, we're going to get away the, the time. I'm going to put my ginger beer. Uh, when I'm eating, you know, guys, I'm telling you. Get that ginger beer away. Oh, yes. So, I put a little, a lot of sauce in it because I like, got my food a little bit of gravy in it. Don't like my food, no gravy in it. Mm. Let me try this one. Sugar pan, mm. the carrot, not too soft, not too hard. It's a little bit crunchy. That's why I like my veg. Don't make the carrot too soft. That's why I, when I put them in the pot, I just turn on the fire, very low, put the lid on it, let it take time and steam, take time and cook. Don't turn up the fire too high. You don't want your carrot, a saggy carrot. Make your carrot nice and crunchy. Look at that. Lovely. Lovely. Then, the mashed potato with the sweet corn and the green peas, don't put no egg in it. And the mayonnaise, a little bit of pepper and some milk. Ooh, you got a nice brunch to sauce. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Tell you. No, I'm gonna get some of these off. Mm. Go right down into that fish. Remember, this is the, the big part of the fish head. So, before we do that, guys, we have to check for bone. We have to check for bone. That's why I like big fish, got big fish on big bone, you can see them. 
Smaller fish now has so much bone in it. You can't. Mm, 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 mm. As you put it in your mouth, you can taste that scotch bonnet and that season, that onion, that garlic, that fish season, that pigment, all spice, kick it off more. Mm. Wow. That pimento allspice is, 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 the, is the trick. Remember that guys, I did not put in the pimento grains and more, I crushed them up. Okay. I showed them inside. Mm. <coughs> mm. Mm. Beautiful. So, when you fry the fish, you don't want to fry it too crispy. Because you don't want to fry out all of that niceness, that taste for that red snapper give you. Okay, if you fry it out too dry, you don't want that. Unless you're going to do an SW fish, you're going to do that. But if you're going to do a brown stew fish now, you just barely burn it on the both sides. Then you take it off, then you prepare your season and everything. Season half cook, then you put in your fish back. So you don't want to fry your fish so dry. So that fish keep on keeping that texture on it, that niceness way you're looking for in that brown stew fish. Mm. I'm telling you, I just gotta mash this up. Gotta mash up this fish. Mm. Nice, just melt up that bone, people. Look at that. Mm mm mm. Lovely. Lovely, lovely, guys. So, thank you guys for watching. And anybody who's checking in today, thank you guys for showing me the love. Please give me a thumbs up. And tomorrow we'll have a different recipe coming up, guys. So, thank you guys for the love. Thank you guys for the. Give me the thumbs up and everything like that. So I will see you guys in the next video because I'm going to sit down and enjoy this food because when I'm talk, when I'm eating, I don't like to talk too much. I will bite my tongue. So I will see you guys in the next awesome, delicious recipe in Selvin Kitchen, guys. This is finger licking. This is more watering. This is awesome. So try this recipe, people, and let me know how this recipe turned out. Guys, I'm starving. And I'm going to enjoy this food. So thank you guys very much for watching. Stay safe. Walk good. Selvin Kitchen. Love you guys. So stay safe guys. A lot of love from Selvin Kitchen. Stay safe. Love. Peace.